Okay, the next thing we need to do is go to the Applied Motion website and download the hardware manual for our ST10Q drive. Uh, that way we'll have the information we need to connect the drive to the network, uh, to the motor, and the uh, power supply. So I've got a web browser open here, and I'm going to navigate to www.applied-motion.com. That will take me to the Applied Motion homepage. There it is. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to get what you need. Uh, this time I'm going to choose the Support menu and click Manuals. That takes me to a page containing all of the manuals, starting with our Stepper Drive product line. Let me just scroll down a little bit here. ST10Q-EE is the drive that I have. The EE indicates that I have the Ethernet communication option as well as the encoder feedback option. Right here on the top of the list is the hardware manual. I'm going to right click and do a save target as. Let's put that right on the desktop so I'll have it when I need it. That manual is downloading in a PDF format, so uh, I can view it in Adobe Acrobat Reader. If you don't have Acrobat Reader, uh, just go on over to the uh, Adobe website at uh, adobe.com and you can pick up a free copy. Now we're going to demonstrate some wiring. First, we'll connect our 8 leaded motor in parallel, as recommended in the manual. I printed the motor connection page from the ST Hardware Manual so it'll be handy while I'm making the connections. First, we'll connect the orange and black white wires to the a terminal. To do this, I'm using the applied motion screwdriver that came with my drive. It's almost worth buying one just to get this tool. Now, we're going to find the black and orange-white wires. Those will go to the A-minus terminal. Just like that. After that, red and yellow-white will go to B+. Plus. And the last two wires must go to B minus. Now I'm going to unplug the 8 lead motor so I can demonstrate the connections for a 4 lead motor. We'll just set this aside for a moment. I have here one of our new HT24 motors. They always come with 4 leads, as do the uh, little HT11s. I'm going to need to switch manual pages. Here we are. Four lead connectors can only go one way. So red goes to A+. Plus. Let's get my spare connector in here. And here we go. Let's take red to A+. Plus. Blue will go to A minus. Make sure we don't have any stray wire strands. Nothing good's going to come from that. Now we need yellow for B plus. And finally, our white wire is going to go to B minus. Now we need to connect the power supply. This time, just the rewires. I'll move the motor instructions out of the way. I've already connected the power supply end. My red wire, by convention, goes to the positive DC voltage. The uh, black wire goes to the negative DC voltage, and this green wire is going to be my chassis ground. Uh, that will make sure that uh, any electrical noise goes uh, where we need it to go, namely to earth ground, uh, rather than somewhere we don't want it to go. 
Okay, this is my v, v plus terminal over here on the end, and uh, we'll run our DC plus into that. Very good. Now the black wire. That needs to go to V minus. Okay, the chassis ground screw is over here on the chassis. So let me just loosen that up a little bit. If you're a real pro, you'll crimp a lug on this thing before you do what I'm trying to do here. And we're all set. That's our power supply. Now we're going to explain how to connect your drive to an Ethernet network. If you want to connect your drive to an office or home network and aren't sure which IP address to use, set the rotary switch to position F. When the drive wakes up, it will request an address from your network's DHCP server. Trust me, you've probably got one. They're built into most routers and Windows file servers. When you launch the configurator software, you can use the drive discovery feature to find and connect to your drive. You can also connect directly to the Ethernet port of a PC. You can even use the same Cat5 cable you use to connect to a network because applied motion Ethernet drives all include an auto crossover circuit. If you have a laptop, you can even connect wirelessly to your home or office network while talking to your ST drive over a cable. To connect directly to a PC, set the rotary switch at position 0 so the IP address is 10 10 10 10. No other network is likely to be on that subnet. Next, Set the static IP address of your network card to 10, 10, 10, 11. Let me show you how. First, go to the Start menu and select Control Panel. If you're running Windows 7, your Control Panel will look like this. Scroll down until you see Network and Sharing Center. Click there. On the left side, you should see Change Adapter Settings. Again, click there. Now we're looking for local area connection. That represents the connection where you plug a jack into the side of your PC. Double click and you'll now see the local area connection properties. We're looking for TCP IP. That would be Internet Protocol version 4. Select Properties. Notice that my PC is set for obtain an IP address automatically. That means when it wakes up on a network, it's going to ask a DHCP server to assign it a dynamic IP address. What we need for this example is a static IP address. Select Use the following IP address. Then enter 10, 10, 10, 11. If I click below under Subnet Mask, it will automatically assign me the subnet 255000. That should be fine for what we're doing now. Click OK and your computer will remember the static IP setting. Don't forget to turn dynamic addressing back on if you need to connect to a network by cable. Many networks use IP addresses that start with 192.168.0. If yours is one of these, there's a pretty good chance you can just set your drive for one of the IP addresses that start with the same numbers and be good to go. Personally, I use 192.168.0.130 at home and at Applied Motion Corporate. If you want to be safe, ask your IT person to assign you an address. Our guy reserved a block of addresses for the network engineering team, and these are never given out by the DHCP server to other devices. In the absence of a network administrator, you can download a tool called Angry IP that will scan your network and provide you with the addresses of everything on it. For this exercise, I'm going to set my switch to position D. That's address 192.168.0.130.